Hi YouTube, Profil is back and in this video I'm going to show you the construction of the hardware part for the Farmy Profi CH27 Arduino Uno project. As you have seen in the previous video, I have used an Arduino Uno board, one of the most famous prototyping board, in order to build my own system, my own controller for the wood chipper. The Arduino Uno is the board that I have used in the first version of the project. The second version uses an Arduino Pro Mini because it is cheaper and smaller and actually I only have one Arduino Uno and I want to use it for my next projects. This whole application uh, works on a tractor that is actually an automotive application since you do have a 12 volt battery as a power supply. So I decided to use a small DC-DC step-down converter. It takes 12 volt as inputs and convert it into a 5 volt DC volt output. I actually need this because all these boards, especially the Arduino Uno and also the other Arduino, they work with the 3.3 and also 5 volt logics. They are not able to read or use 12 volt because otherwise I'm going to burn every, every pin of the Arduino and I don't want to do that. So this is the first main part of the project. Since I don't want to leave it free into the, the box, I decided to sold it onto a small strip board here that actually is able to host all the components for the project. About component, I'm talking about uh, connections. These are required for the cables coming from the boxes of the chipper and moreover all the resistances that uh, I have used for the buttons and for the sensor. Talking about the buttons, I have two main digital inputs, the, the ones coming from the radio control. This yellow box here on the wood chipper is the one containing the relays to command the forward and the backward direction. As you see, this board has the, this small board here is the antenna, and then you have five relays. We have used only two of them because we are commanding the forward and the backward direction. About the connection, this is the electrical scheme we have implemented. The relays, they do have two pins for the normally open circuit. As you see, we're gonna have two because we have to command two directions. And from the Arduino, from my white box, let's say, I have taken a five volt power supply and I've connected this power supply to both of the connection of the dead end connection of the relays. Um, from this point on, I have implemented two different connection for each, uh, for each relay. One connection is the one going directly to the digital input of the Arduino, the signal that I actually want to read. Zero volt if you are not commanding anything, and uh, five volts that is the high level if you want to command something. In order to correctly define the tension level is typically in electronics, you typically use what is called a pull down resistor. I have copied the same circuit also for the backward direction, still with a pull down resistor and you're gonna see the pull down resistors onto the strip board here. So in this way from the tele radio system, I actually have four cables. One cable is the plus five volt power supply, two cables are the two digital inputs, and finally you have the ground connection. Remember that for all the connections, for all the boards and all the circuits that you implement, you always have to, to define uh, the common uh, ground cable because this is the one that equalizes all the voltages and the tensions level. The second most important input is the inductive sensor, that one that you need to measure the rotation speed of the rotor. This sensor generates a square wave, as you have seen from the previous video, that is from zero volt to the actually 12 volts. I cannot directly feed this square wave to a digital pin of the Arduino because otherwise I'm going to burn everything. So what I had to do is to implement a small voltage divider that actually copies the square wave, 0 12 square wave, and reduces it to almost 4.7, 4.8 volts. Something like that, you will see. This is a square wave that is actually a reduced square wave because I'm using the voltage divider. This is the low level zero volt, and this is the high 
voltage level that is almost 4.7 when I was building the wall system, I did not have that much resistances. So I wasn't able to find out the perfect match, the two resistances, in order to actually reach the correct 12 to 5 volt reduction ratio. So what I decided to go for was to take two resistances in order to actually reach a level that is lower than 4.7 volt. And in order to discriminate between the high level tension and low level tension, I decided to connect this pin to an analog pin of the Arduino because I'm going to use the Arduino as a multimeter. And then I want to define a threshold level that is something like that. So if I'm going to measure a tension level that is higher than this threshold, I'm going to say, okay, the signal is returning the high level and so I'm not measuring anything uh, while the rotor is moving. If the signal is below this threshold, I can for sure define the low level. So meaning that the inductive sensor is reading something, is reading the metal strip when the rotor is moving. So in this way, I'm perfectly able to find out which is the, the form of the square wave. And moreover, I'm able to read the falling edges and rising edges of the signal. So I'm able to compute the rotation speed of the rotor. Finally, I had to talk about the outputs. Since the electro valves that we have to command, they do work with 12 volts, and the Arduino Uno is not able to provide 12 volts and moreover with not enough current, I had to use these small modules, relay modules. They are commanded via digital output of the Arduino and they close a 12 volt circuit, external circuit. This external circuit, as you see from the scheme here, is directly connected, the power supply is directly connected to the battery, and then you close a specific circuit for the backward or the forward direction, depending on, on what you're commanding. The common cable, the ground, is the same, and so also in this case I have four cables. A 12 volt power supply, two output signals, and also the ground cable, the common cable. This concludes the construction of the other part. In the next video, I'll show you in details the elaboration of the software component of the project. We will see how I read the input, how I wrote the outputs. These are the simple aspects. The more interesting aspects are how I handled the um, inductive sensor and how I was able to measure the rotation speed and moreover also the finite state machine that handles the no stress function because I was also able to replicate it and you have few parameters that you can change and so in this way you are able to fit it to your, to your specific application. So stay tuned and look for the next video. Bye!